what do people get wrong in their morning routine so it is very important to understand that our day actually begins at the night so let's just say if we have slept on time and we have had a restful sleep only then can we expect our morning to be right one routine that you would say is extremely beneficial to maintaining your health your sleep your mood your mind everything what would you say if it is one Hi everyone, welcome back to Take 20. Today we are going to discuss my favorite, actually this is a good morning routine. And why should one have like a good morning routine, Alkesh? Yeah, so since we have been growing up, we have been told the importance of waking up on time, doing specific things on time. But why should we really need to do them? You know, what's really the value in that? So before we dive into that, it is very important for us to understand the concept of circadian uh, rhythm. So circadian rhythm are basically the inherent biological clocks that our body has. There are multiple clocks, but the one that we are specifically concerned about is the 24-hour clock that we have. And that clock is governed by how the light around us gets manipulated. So... Let us go back in time, you know, when the electricity was not there, where the indoor lighting was not as freely available as it is right now. Our only major source of light was the sun. And based on how the sun rises and how the sun sets, our daily biological cycle gets manipulated. Mm. So how does a daily biological cycle work is that when we are asleep and you want to wake up, there is a spike in the cortisol levels that we have. Okay. Yeah. When you do a, the, for the blood report, they always tend to check the cortisol in the morning. Yeah. On, okay, as soon as you wake up. Yeah. Okay. So the cortisol spike is the body's cue that it's morning and we have to wake up. Okay. Right now. Especially if somebody is having sleep disturbances, we check if their cortisol pattern are correct or not. So if their cortisol pattern are not in check, that means their sleep cycle is not not right. Because cortisol has a pattern throughout the day. It spikes right. up in the morning and goes down at night. Right. Um, and how cortisol is responsible for the way we wake up in the morning, the melatonin spike at night is responsible for the way we sleep. So that's why people who have sleeping issues are generally recommended to have melatonin. Right. But if their sleep was okay and their biological clock was right, body would have produced good enough melatonin for, for them to have a restful sleep. Right. Similarly, the way to mimic or the way people mimic the cortisol spike in the morning is to have coffee. Because when we have coffee, that spikes the cortisol level that we have. Right. That's why many people in the morning, when they wake up, they feel groggy. And until they have their morning cup of coffee, they don't get that wakefulness. So there is this 24-hour clock that our body operates on. Mm -hmm. And if the clock is operating right, it has a cascading effect throughout the day. Mm. If it is not going right, it has a cascading effect throughout the day in a way that all the other timing of hormone releases are affected because of it. So the cortisol release in the morning can dictate all other hormonal balances or imbalances, you're saying? Yeah, and also the melatonin release. And the melatonin and release at, at night. Yeah. So, which is why a morning routine is really important. Yeah. Right? Yeah. What do people get wrong in their morning routine? So, it is very important to understand that our day actually begins at the night. So, let's just say if we have slept on time and we have had a restful sleep, only then can we expect our morning to be right. Correct. Okay. And nowadays, there is this very popular uh, jargon that's going across in the market. It's called as revenge sleep procrastination. Revenge sleep procrastination. So what that means... Procrastination. We, yeah. Mm. So what would that mean is we are so occupied throughout the day. Right. We are busy with our lives and everything. We do not get time for ourselves. And there is an inherent need to feel centered and, you know, want the time for ourselves that at night... We know that we should be sleeping. It's time to sleep. We could be sleepy as well. But we still are on the phone procrastinating the sleep that we need to take because we hadn't had that time for our own selves. 
एंड इट इज वेरी कॉमन फॉर एवरी वन इन डे टू डे लाइफ टू स्लीप दम सेल्स टू स्लीप दम सेल्फ टू द फोन थ्रू द फोन एंड सिंस वी हैव नाउ डिस्कस्ड दैट द लाइट अराउंड अस मैनिपुलेट्स हाउ आर बायोलॉजिकल क्लॉक इज गोइंग टू वर्क exposing ourselves to cell phone at night the blue light the blue light is setting ourselves for failure because that is inhibiting the melatonin production that we have right yeah so i i know most people know about this i know that hmm. but we still are ag- addicted to our phones knowing that we all know in some way we might not know the scientific jargon hmm. but we know that this is disturbing our sleep but it's depressing but it's addictive so yeah. even though you know that this is happening why is it happening why is it that we can't put away our phones what yeah. is this new habit that is really not doing anybody any good because yeah. i was on my broadcast the other day and i noticed that there were so many messages that said i'm addicted to my phone it's making me anxious i'm addicted to my phone i'm i'm depressed Yeah. um so why aren't we able to stop yeah so the way all the social media apps and everything on a phone is researched and designed is such a way that it's going to give us a sense of instant gratification so when we have that feeling we have a surge in something called as the dopamine hormone that we have and dopamine is a hormone of motivation it has other functions as well but that's primarily the hormone of motivation that we have and how our body deals with hormones is that if there is a spike and this is true for the insulin and sugar as well if there is a spike the crash is equally fast and bad so let's just say if we have a spike in our sugar the sh- goes up we get the surge of energy then but the crash is equally bad and equally fast the same goes for dopamine as well when we have that instant gratification we get that surge and the crash is e- e- equally fast okay and when the crash is equally fast we do not have motivation and we are searching for that next, next dopamine hit. hit and that again we are going to get through the phone so it's a constant cycle of dopamine surge and drop surge and drop that's one thing and second thing is we want to make ourselves feel good we did not have the time throughout the day the easiest way to do that is to get an easy dopamine hit and that's what the phone does and it's really convenient we always have it in the pocket and it's right there i i know that my morning routine has helped me significantly mm. so if you could suggest one routine that you would say is extremely beneficial yeah. to you know to maintaining your health your sleep your mood your mind everything what would you say if it is one I can't I can't decide which one because I mm. do quite a bit what would you say but the best thing for that to do would be to get exposure to early morning sunlight because the early morning sunlight has frequencies that allow us to understand that it's morning time and it's and and it's time to get that cortisol spike and get the biological clock in order and that's just a byproduct of the evolution that we have had Right. throughout the doyers as much as it is important to have exposure to light in the morning it is equally important to limit the exposure to blue light in the evening in the evening and for that there are many things that one can do uh we can just dim the light after the sunset uh, there are many smart bulbs in the market which automatically do that for you we can activate the blue light filters on a phone at the night we can absolutely limit our phone use usage mm-hmm. at night are there something called as blue light blocking glasses which, which you I, have I been use, using yes. for quite some sometimes we can use those now what blue light blocking uh, glasses does is that when the light passes through lens it does not allow the blue light frequency to pass through that okay. so what we get is minus the blue light which allows us to minimize mm. the exposure to light and give us a cue that it's night time and it's time to wind down what about people who are in it they work through the night they work yeah. on their laptops i don't think that they can get the morning light or they can restrict usage of electronics at night 
and I know that a lot of them suffer from sleep issues. Yeah. And I, and it's clear now why. Yeah. Why they they suffer with sleep issues. So how how would it be helpful? How what can you say that could help them fix these issues if they have no choice? Yeah. So uh, they can do secondary things, which gives our body the cue. You know that this is that time of the day, and this is not that time of the day. So, for example, we can limit all our stimulant intake, like caffeine and everything, in the first half of the day, mm-hmm. so that uh, it helps the body to wind down in the second half of the day. Also, before we go to bed, we can do things that calm our mind down. We can do certain mindfulness exercises. We can meditate and calm our mind down, uh, which will give our body the cue that it's, again it's the time to wind down. And if you absolutely can't limit uh, the exposure to screens at night, most of the devices nowadays come with a blue light blocking uh, filter mm. inherent to them. If not, we can always wear the blue light blocking glasses to give our body cue that you know no blue light is coming in right now, so it's time to wind down at this point in time. And also, not to eat a lot. In the second half of th- of the day, most of the eating, if it's done in the first half of the day, and if we do not eat in the second half of the day, but won't you be hungry and wake up, or not be able to sleep? Ah, uh, but if we take our calorific requirement in the first half of the day, and by first half I mean till seven eight p.m. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, because eating around mid midnight ish, yeah. or you know just eating and going to bed, eating a heavy meal and going to bed, that's definitely not going going to help. and uh, also limiting the snacking that we do because mm-hmm. if we keep on snacking for longer duration of time our gut doesn't get the time to get into a rest and digest mm. and start the digestive process with it and giving the cue of the body to rest and digest is another way to getting into a healthy sleep, sleep. pattern okay yeah um so now that we have an understanding of uh, you know what circadian rhythm is what body's biological clock is we have been uh, doing things that will help you get your biological clock in check yeah and uh, and that is actually very important to get all the other bodily processes in in check mm-hmm. so let's just uh, glance upon what do you do on a regular basis what's your morning route routine like okay so my morning routine is a lot <laughs> it's yeah. a lot and i think that most people might find it overwhelming and quite impractical to follow so i must say that i i didn't get here in a day or even a month it took me one year to get to these practices to slowly keep adding practices according to my needs so there's no pressure for you to just pick up all of these practices in fact just whatever your schedule will allow pick up one practice and um, you know keep at it keep at it i would say these things they don't they don't give you benefits in a day or in a week yeah. but eventually they are life changing they are more powerful than most medicines actually yeah so that being said again no pressure guys but <laughs> <laughs> no, i know that that's a really nice disclaimer to have because knowing all these things can have an information overload, overload and can yeah. be overwhelming as as well right and can in fact act negatively that it's too much to do i don't want to start at the first first place so yeah trust me i started with just one practice and yeah. even that i failed many times like i started and stopped and started and stopped and started and stopped so yeah. it's not some something that i was instantly good at yeah. uh so now well uh, my morning routine is i wake up at 5:30 okay and as soon as i wake up i mentioned before i start a journal like i i start but it's still on an app instead of being pen and paper tell me why it should be pen on a pen and paper because uh I know that I, this is something that I must change that I must start to journal mm. writing it down instead of using an app for it di- digitally. Yeah. Why would you say that pen and paper is better? So when we always use a phone mm. there is a mental pattern that has been formed. And whenever we use a phone 
you will see that when whenever you are checking a message and end anything by default you end up reaching the reels and before you know it's already 20 minutes okay you're saying like that okay into scrolling the the reels and also if you have an option of early morning sun exposure that will be a much better exposure to a light because the frequencies are aligned as per that oh so and the light uh, of the digital phone. light might not be the best thing okay i'll try <laughs> yeah so as soon as i wake up i write a gratitude um, journal. So yeah. it just sets up my day. It sets up, I set myself up to have a good day. Yeah. Let's say that. Uh, so I write that and then just five minutes of sun, sun soak. I uh, do a breathing exercise. What I follow is the Wim Hof method. Yeah. Mm, I really, really like that. Uh, followed by meditation, like 25 minutes of meditation. I have been doing Isha Kriya for a while now mm. and it has been transforming. Uh, it has helped me tremendously. Yeah. So that's the kind of meditation I really enjoy. And I've recently, or over the last couple of months, started tapping. Okay. Okay, so tapping is a process that helps you balance your energy and also helps relieve pain. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, that's my morning routine, which is a bit hectic, I, I know. But um, I there has been so many changes after this morning routine. After, and I feel like I have more consistent energy through the day. Mm -hmm. My mood is stable. And just an overall enhanced sense of well-being. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, journaling, sun soak, Wim Hof, meditation, tapping. That's a lot, five. But mm -hmm. you can start with one or two and you will see great changes. You will find it hard initially, but just keep at it. And apart from the morning practices, I also have a few evening practices, which is, like you said, Cutting out blue light, keeping my phone away 30 minutes before I sleep, which is yeah. really important. And uh, I also have a time limit on my Instagram. Oh, nice. Yes, I do have a time limit. I, that option is available to everyone. So I think that, you know, either people go to one extreme of deleting the app yeah. and then always thinking, what's going on there? What's going on yeah. there? <laughs> yeah. And or like, excess but i think the time limit is like it's like a it's a it's a nice uh, healthy check on yeah. how much you're using the app yeah uh so i think like the phone is not always a bad thing it also provides you with these opportunities to you yeah. know fix a time limit on your phone and uh, it's not all bad right yeah. so there are these options that are available so yeah. i do have a time limit on my instagram yeah and yeah so winding down is for me as important, I think. Yeah, yeah so I, I felt it like a personal attack when you said, you know, going all out on Instagram, then deleting it. Deleting it. Yeah, I'm guilty of that. So I delete yeah. my Instagram every two weeks. Yeah. And then I'm like, no, it's a professional requirement. I'm giving myself excuses. Excuses, yeah. And then um, installing it back again. And before I know, it's just the same cycle repeats. Yeah. All over again. So I should definitely try the time limit thing out. Yeah, because I, I, I think that when you push away a thought, right, yeah. it, it, when you start pushing away a thought, it really, how do I say it, it becomes bigger than what it is. But if you yeah. just process that thought and if you allow it and if you just like say, okay, let me feel this, yeah. it passes away. Yeah. Uh, when we give it, when we, when we try to push out something, any kind of negative emotion or yeah. of, we tend to give it more importance yeah. by trying to forcefully push away that thought. But yeah. I, so I think that that's what I realized, and that's when I put the time limit on Instagram and realized that okay, this is doable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another very important thing that you mentioned about uh, was uh, journaling that you do in the morning because throughout the day, we do not get the time and opportunity to self reflect and introspect our thoughts. And if we do that first thing in the morning, it helps us to be more centered. Right. Um, mentally, we have a better sense of self-realization and uh, we have a better sense of sense acknowledgement and we carry that throughout the day. And that helps us to not be in a reactive or an autopilot mode throughout the day. So that means you end up leading your day in a more 
mindful and an intentional uh, in an intentional sense yeah and subconsciously you've already you know put out mm. that um mood like yeah. you put out a good positive happy mood and somehow i don't know how it it just maintains through the day yeah i found a big difference because i all, my biggest problem was morning anxiety and yeah and positive journaling in the morning grat- g- gratitude journal in the morning has helped me tremendously yeah and, and also i feel when we sleep on the bed while scrolling social media we always have this you know we don't have this you know that person has it because everyone wants to put out their best self right on social me- media and when we sleep on that thought we also wake up with that thought ah you're and, so right about that yeah. you're so right about that you yeah. You're right actually because when I see something that that I see something and I was like mm I I feel a sense of inadequacy and then I wake up with that exact uh feeling in the morning. Yeah. So yeah, which is not always social media what what people project is is yeah. not the truth again yeah. guys it's not the truth people project the best version of themselves on social media. Trust me, I'm on social media and I ha- I always have to resist the urge to do that i i have to re- resist the urge to only like you know when to post my highs and my accomplishments and you know you you just have this need right for yeah. uh, for approval and you need for that validation, like yeah. validation um and i have to resist it sometimes like when i when i when i click click a nice picture there's so what i do off late is when when i click a nice picture and i want to post it I actually don't post it immediately. Okay. It's like almost a lesson to myself about instant gratification. Mm. I don't post it immediately. I wait for a few days and yeah. then I post it. And it's yeah. just a sense of okay, let me enjoy that picture. It's okay that I don't need to get it like I have a million likes for it instantly. Yeah. Uh let me resist. Yeah. Yeah, you think that would help? Uh, like what how does that help? Yeah, I think that will definitely help because you are cher- cherishing it a lot more for yourself now. Yeah. And you are not cherishing it for the validation, validation. that the external world is giving you for right. that. So I think that should definitely help. And uh the lack of adequacy that we feel is exactly opposite of what an introspective journaling does where you self affirm and set your positive foot forward for the day that sets you up for the su- success right. for the entire day but if you're going to wake up with that thought you know i am not enough yeah it's just going to reflect in all the actions that you have from that point on i wish you kind of adopt the right practice for you and i do sincerely wish that it helps you do some research about um you know some of the practices that we talked about do some research for yourself uh pick it up for a few days see how you feel i'm sure each one of us has one practice that really resonates with us like uh, for some people it could be a different practice but just pick up a good morning routine uh don't wake up rush to your phone or rush to get out wake up a little earlier to do your morning routine trust me in the long run this is going to give you back much more than you put in so all the best with your morning routines 